For more resources, visit rymonline.org. The Local Youth Worker is a daily podcast that's centered on five questions each week. Ranging from the practical to the professional, we're looking for answers to the questions you're asking. Whether you're in full-time, part-time, or even volunteer youth ministry, this podcast is for you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Local Youth Worker, a daily podcast brought to you by Reformed Youth Ministries. I'm your host, John Parrott. All this week, we'll be talking to Katie Van Eppern. Uh, Katie, welcome. Hi there. And I guess I should ask you this first. Did I pronounce your last name correct? You did. Okay. You did, Eppern. which is impressive because it's very commonly mispronounced. So well done. <laughs> well, good deal. Um, so yeah, we'll be talking to Katie. Katie is the Director of Youth Ministries at Highview Presbyterian Church in Dalsman, Wisconsin. And she's been there since 2016. Is that correct? Uh, yes. August of 2016, I took over. Correct. All right. Uh, she grew up in Little Shoot, Wisconsin and graduated from the University of Wisconsin in Whitewater. Uh, before coming on staff at Highview, Katie worked as a high school math teacher at Waukesha South High School. Did I get it right? You did. All right. Uh, she also loves playing volleyball and has coached high school volleyball for the past several years. Uh, so, Katie, before we get into uh, the questions, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself as well as, uh, you know, how you got into youth ministry? Yeah, it was just, it was kind of a, a crazy turn of events. Um, I had been teaching, uh, like you said, for five years. Um, at the end of what would have been my third year teaching, um, our youth director here, oh, I'm sorry, at the end of my fourth year teaching, our youth director here at Highview announced that he was going to be leaving, and I um, I thought about going ahead and applying. Um, I went to school for teaching, uh, obviously, because that's what I did for five years. <laughs> uh, I went to school for teaching, so I had very little, actually no training in theology and scripture and anything like that. I have a license to teach high school and middle school chemistry and math, so not the Bible. <laughs> so... I kind of toyed around with the idea for a while, and by the time I, you know, made a decision, they, the search committee had already uh, moved forward with a candidate, which was totally fine. Um, so fast forward to about April of, what would have been April of 2016, I got a text from my pastor that said, hey, uh, can you come over for lunch after church on Sunday? I have, I need to talk to you about something. Um, I've been involved with Vacation Bible School and teaching Sunday school, so I was involved um, in bits and pieces in the youth ministry, um, so I knew a lot of the kids and some of the families and stuff, and you know, was looking to um, get a little bit more involved. I didn't really know what that was going to look like, um, but had just kind of made the decision in my mind that I was not going to teach um, summer school through the district. I'd been doing that basically since I started teaching, uh, so I kind of just wanted a break to, you know, whether it was get more involved in the youth ministry at Highview or just have some time off. Mm -hmm. um, I had just made that decision, and my pastor basically said to me, hey, um, our youth director is going to be leaving at the end of May. Would you be willing to step in for the summer in a part-time role? And I said, uh, <laughs> well, you know, the classic Christian line, well, let me pray about it. <laughs> um, so I took some time to think about it and, you know, obviously pray about it, and I talked with um, some friends, some role models, counselors, mm -hmm. mentors, whatever you want to call it that I have. Um, and, you know, decided that I would go ahead and do it. Well, before, I guess before even the end of the school year, I started to hear some whisperings that there was a potential of them offering me the job full time. And, you know, so I basically went to my pastor and said, if this is something you're looking to do, I'm totally open to it. I just need to know whether or not I should sign my teaching contract because <laughs> if I sign it and then break it, I don't have $3,000 to pay <laughs> to break my teaching contract. Yeah. Um, so if that's not the direction you want to go, if you you know feel like you need to put a search committee together and go through that process, I totally respect that. 
I just kind of need to know. And within a week, they're like, yeah, we want to offer you the job. And I've been here ever since. Nice. <laughs> so, right. yeah, it was not where it, where I would have expected my life to go, but I couldn't be happier. So mm, Great. And it has chemistry come in handy in youth ministry at all? <laughs> <laughs> um, chemistry and math, about the extent that it's come in handy is when I have kids that are not doing well in those classes. And I can say to them and their parents, hey, you have no excuse because you have free tutoring. So get your butts to my office and we're going to do some there math. And that's about it. But there I'm okay with that. Chemistry and so. discipleship. There you go. Combining those Yeah, together. totally. <laughs> totally the same thing. <laughs> All right. So. Well, that's that's interesting. Thanks for, for sharing that. Um, it's always neat just to hear how, how the Lord works and gets people uh, into ministry. Um, right. So, Katie, what we want to do today is something we do with uh, youth workers uh, all over. Um, it's interesting to hear, ask these same basic five questions and, <clears throat> excuse me, just hear how how people do youth ministry in different contexts. So uh, today's question is, what's the best thing you've done in youth ministry? Um, this can be a Bible study you've led. This can be discipleship. This can be a trip. This can be anything. But what's one of the best things you've done in youth ministry? Ooh, that's such a loaded question as I was trying to like pick through, um, you know, some of my, you know, I guess my highlights from the last year and a half, I would have to say one of my favorite things, um, we did a series, it would have been last spring, my pastor and I wrote it ourselves, which I think was part of the reason why I liked it. Cause we could very much format it to our kids, mm-hmm. uh, and some of the things I knew they were dealing with and struggling with. And basically we did, it was, we just called it five traits of a disciple. So we kind of picked five different characteristics of, you know, things that we felt were super important. Uh, We looked at the mindset of a disciple. We looked at um, the influence of a disciple. We looked at the stewardship of a disciple. We looked at the purity of a disciple and we looked at the endurance of a disciple. So things that kids could relate to in their current lives, but things that obviously we could also tie back to scripture. So it was super relevant for them. We got to look at a lot of different scripture and it also gave us the opportunity to have some really um, open and really honest and sometimes super awkward dialogue (laughs) because talking about things like sex and drugs and drinking and some of the the garbage that they deal with Mm -hmm. is not fun. But we were able to create an environment where the kids felt safe, um, where they really felt like they could open up and share some of those things. So, um, yeah, that was probably my favorite thing, Um, again, just because that's where I really started to feel like I had reached a point with my kids that they were really comfortable with me. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously, a lot of them knew me from before I took over full time, but you know, I think that's finally when they started to be like, okay, she's, you know, she's not just our youth director. She's a human being and she's (laughs) sinful and struggles with a lot of the same things we do. And she's here for us and she cares about us and she loves us. So, um, that would probably be one of my highlights for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, anything, anytime you do something like that, or like you said, you were writing this yourself, you're putting a lot of thought, a lot of time into it. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's going to resonate. And and um, just kind of a logistical follow-up question to that. You said this was five traits. Yes. Um, did you break that up? Was it five separate talks, or did you spend two weeks on each talk? I mean, did it span over the course of, you know, 12 weeks? I mean, what are some of the those kind of details? We just did one a week. So we, like the first one I think we looked at was the mindset of a disciple. So we focus primarily on, you know, kind of information in, information out. What are the things that you're feeding your mind hmm. and your heart with? Um, because that's going to then affect what comes out um, in the way that you speak, in the way that you treat people. Um, so we spent a week on each one with each one. Obviously, there's different scriptures attached to it. Um, and we had uh, the way we kind of run things is um, – more discussion based. We don't have a huge ministry. So I don't, it's not one where like I gave a talk and then we broke out into discussion groups. Um, I have all the kids with me the whole time and we just talk through things, walk through scripture together. Um, 
so yeah, we just did one a week. So it was a five week series. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's great. And I mean, especially at that time, like you said, um, you're not just up there, you know, teaching, it's more of a discussion, um, right. to, to give those students that opportunity because you, you do, uh, it, it seems like students don't have a lot of those places oftentimes where they feel like, okay, I can't ask this question. You know, this is a, a safe right. place. I mean, we actually, we had um, Tasha Chapman on the uh, show last week and um, she was just talking about the importance of, you know, giving students a place where they feel like, okay, this is a safe place where I can ask questions, mm-hmm. where I can be vulnerable. Um, and so like Absolutely. you're saying, you know, being able to sit down and turn this into a discussion and um, get these students to think and interact. I mean, that, that'll, that'll resonate for sure with them. Right. Well, and I think the other advantage of that too is it it helps it helps me be more real with them. You know, they don't see me as, um, you know, like a teacher who's standing in front of them. Like, yes, I'm trying to teach them and guide them in their thinking, but you know, I can be vulnerable with them too. I can share some of the things that I've struggled with or are still struggling with, um, so they don't feel like they're alone. They don't feel like I'm coming at them from this. I'm holier than thou and I'm better than you are. Like we're all in this together. We're all on the same. It's an equal playing field here. We are all sinners. We are all in need of God's grace and I'm no better than you are. We are all on this in this together. Um, so that just, it, it's an easier, it, it gives me a better opportunity to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as anyone knows, whenever you're teaching on anything, um, it's typically a pretty convicting uh, process <laughs> because like you said, mm-hmm. I mean, just on the whole mindset of the disciple, you know, and as you ask that question of what are you putting into your mind? What are you viewing? What are you thinking about all of those things? Mm-hmm. I'm thinking of, wow, uh, that, that would be, you know, pretty, pretty humbling uh, to teach on. Uh-huh. Honestly. It is. It definitely forces me to take a step back and kind of examine my own life mm-hmm. and, you know, am I setting the example? Am I doing the same things that I'm asking of the kids? So, yeah, it's sometimes a little painful. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I have to face some of my own struggles and my own obstacles. For sure. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Well, that's good. Well, is there, is there anything else you want to add? Anything else that comes to mind when you think of some of the best things you've done in, in ministry? Um, I mean, specifics, maybe not. Um you know, just kind of generally, I think my favorite part, um, and the best part about ministry for me is just building relationships with the kids. Um, you know, kind of like we were talking about providing opportunities for them to see that I'm just like they are. I struggle just like they do. I sin just like they do. And they can see that we're all in this together and that, um, I don't know, like, is it, as long as I can always have opportunities to tell them that I love them and that God loves them and that, um, I want to support them in any way that I can. And I don't know, I just, I just love being with my kids and building relationships with them. And, you know, yes, they drive me bonkers when they're being (laughs) hooligans sometimes, but you know, that's a great chance for us to talk about how, you know, sometimes we need to make adjustments and we need to change and, um, but we're all sinners in need of a savior and God loves us enough to, to provide that for us. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That relational component, uh, to youth ministry obviously is vital, but I mean, to the, to the church in general, uh, I mean, having sure. those brothers and sisters in the faith, um, and yep. just, and just like you said, I mean, how encouraging and reassuring it is to hear, okay, this person struggles in the way that I struggle. Um, that, uh-huh. you know, Christianity isn't about, you know, getting your act together and, right. <laughs> you know, then coming to church or then right. following Jesus. Uh, it's admitting you're weak, uh, admitting you're broken. Um, as many have said, yeah. you know, seeing the, the church as a hospital uh, for sick people. Right. Yep. Um, so following Jesus, even in the midst of our struggles and our brokenness. Absolutely. And... Yeah. Well, Katie, thanks for sharing that. That's helpful. Awesome. Thank you.